it's time for the battle weary to enter the triage. Hello again, and here is your evolutionary astrology report and horoscope for the Cancer New Moon and also total solar eclipse on July 2nd, uh, 2019 at 12.17 p.m. Pacific. This is a powerful eclipse, and it's the only total solar eclipse uh, for 2019. But before we dive into the eclipse, I want to just uh, take a look at the last couple weeks and see the energy we've really been dragged through uh, to get to this point. And battle weary is a good way to describe it because of the Mars opposite Saturn and Pluto. And you might have heard me talk about it in the last video uh, that we've been experiencing. Mars, the great god of war, was in the sign of Cancer and in a face-off or an opposition aspect with Saturn. And Saturn is known as the great malefic in astrology, but it was also off, uh, opposite Pluto as well. And Pluto is known as the god of hell. So the great malefic and the god of hell are staring down the alley at the warrior. Now, Mars doesn't really get along too well with Saturn or Cancer naturally. There's not a strong affinity uh, for these symbols because Mars likes to act first, you know, and ask questions later. It's an action-oriented planet, and it likes to do things in a speedy fashion. Uh, Saturn, on the other hand, doesn't. You know, Saturn likes it slow, methodical, and likes to pump the brakes. And then we sprinkle in a little, you know, Pluto, and this creates a dynamic for some potential emotional volatility. So the word exhaustion comes to mind, but also uh, frustration. So Mars being in Cancer, Cancer is a water sign, Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, those are Earth signs. So this combination of Earth and water and, you know, Earth and water creates mud. And that's really what it felt like for a lot of us is just trudging through the mud, you know, trying to prevail in the face of oppression and opposition. So Mars, the warrior god, exhausted from battle, body slumped over, Shield by his side, you know, sword dragging through the slop, headed back to camp for some rest. It affected some more than others. Uh, it really depends on, you know, where that opposition landed in your own personal birth chart. For me, it was certainly in a, a sensitive house of my chart, and I certainly felt it in my life. So I'll share a quick little anecdote. So I'm in the process of getting married here in uh, Portugal. I'm living in Lisbon. And uh, I thought it would be, you know, a pretty not easy thing to do, but, pretty, you know, follow the bouncing ball and do all, jump through all the hoops that are asked of us and, you know, we'll, we'll accomplish the goal. It turned out to be very difficult. And in retrospect, I wish I had sought out some, you know, advice or maybe some legal help. Uh, but in Sagittarian fashion, you know, I am a Sag. I just jumped in and just like, oh, it can't be that hard. Let's just do it. So, you know, with some uh, with some simple Google searches and getting some um, insights and advice from people here uh, at the registry, I was told I needed to get a new version of my birth certificate uh, and an affidavit for eligibility to marry. And I did that. That was easy. Ordered the birth certificate. Uh, shipped it here, but I wasn't told by the registry that, oh, it also needs to be stamped for pr approval by a Portuguese uh, embassy in the U.S. I was like, oh, great. I wish you would have <laughs> told me that the first time, or I wish I was a little less ignorant and naive. Uh, either way, I shipped the birth certificate back to the U.S., had my family help me by bringing it to the Portuguese consulate to get it stamped officially, and then my family sent it back to me express mail three to five days it was supposed to get here. Well, as I said in the last video, Saturn likes to slow things down, you know, likes to pump the brakes. So although it was supposed to be here in three to five days, it got here in 12. No explanation. You know, that's when it, it came. That's just one example of a string of many setbacks and redos. And uh, again, partly my fault, but there's just a tremendous amount of miscommunication as well. I don't speak the native tongue, so there was that. Uh, but 
it was it was exhausting. It, at times, it brought me to my emotional edges, and it made me think, "Gee, why did I try?" I'm an astrologer. Why did I try to do this <laughs> during the Mars Saturn opposition? But you know, that's the the time it needed to get done, and uh, yeah, it uh, it was very frustrating, also disorienting and confusing in a lot of ways. And uh, Neptune was a part of this. You know, there's a Neptune Jupiter square, and that's classic with Neptune feelings of, of confusion. And uh, there was some stress there. I'm not sharing this experience to lament about it or, you know, woe is me, but rather to just show how the symbols played their role in my life. I, th I think it's helpful to re really see the, s the symbology of astrology come alive through story. Luckily, I was aware of the astrology running through human consciousness. So I was able to, although it was stressful, I was able to achieve a level of surrender. And that's another Neptunian concept. In China, they have a phrase called Me Banfa, Me Banfa. And it basically means there's nothing to be done. There's nothing you can do. It's out of your control. And that can be quite liberating, you know, and bring you to that place of surrender. And really, that Me Banfa is suffused through Chinese culture and their living philosophy. Of course, there's arguments for that. Of, you know, in some circumstance, there's things that can be done and take action and all of that. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, saying, oh, it's out of my control uh, can lead lazy people to not take action because they're lazy. You know, there's that side of the argument. But I think it's a beautiful philosophy in many ways because it's like, don't sweat the small stuff. What will it matter in 500 years? And realizing in within the context of this stressful situation, one of which I haven't experienced like it before, it was just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, surrender, which allowed the frustration, which is so common with this Mars-Saturn opposition, to really just sort of melt off me or flow through me, which was quite helpful. Tapping into the Saturn energy, I realized, you know, I held myself accountable for my part in it. And realized I was a bit naive through the process. I was able to use the energy constructively instead of, instead of letting all the stress affect me and increase my level of suffering, which of course I've been known to do as well, you know, really get caught up in the reality of the situation and let the stress build. And, you know, it's a kind of a, a downward spiral from there. But I was able to let go. Forgive me for making this personal. I'm not trying to center this on me, but just emphasize that, you know, this is evolutionary astrology. We can recognize these archetypes running through us and use them for, you know, great insight in navigating this unfolding dance of life. So the warrior battered and bruised, now back at camp, head straight to the doctor in triage. So this new moon is in Cancer. And Cancer is linked to home, hearth, clan, family. So I like the metaphor of, of you know, coming back to camp because it's home, it's behind the safety of the walls. The planet that rules Cancer is the moon. And moon in astrology is known as the Great Mother archetypally. So here's the great mother energy saying, come here, you know, sit in my lap. What do you need? You know, mothering energy is nurturing energy. So there is a sense here of a need for rest and recovery, for licking our wounds, tending to the needs of the heart, recovering from exhaustion, recovering from stress. This new moon happens on July 2nd, but this cancer energy really extends out for the next couple of weeks. Because this, this is cancer season, you know, sun is in cancer. Venus is just about to enter cancer in a couple days. The north node of the moon is in cancer. Mercury is currently in Leo, but in a couple days it's about to go retrograde and then it'll backtrack into cancer into the middle of the month. So cancer energy is, you know, getting in touch with our subjective reality, our inner child, a good time for emotional healing. Here's a fun prescription for you. It's time for a bubble bath. You know, not the most inspiring thing I'll say, but that, that image of a bubble bath, you know, fits this self-nurturing. I'll also mention that we have four planets in retrograde. You know, Jupiter, Neptune, Saturn, and Pluto. They're all retrograde. 
And then again, Mercury is about to join them in retrograde in a couple of days. So that's five of the, ten, of the 10 things we're calling planets here. So when we have a lot of planets in retrograde, this also suggests an inwardness, a time for reflection. You know, basically retrograde planets are the planets, what they represent is turned inward and creates a more introverted expression of those planets. And this suggests that a lot of our evolution right now is going to happen internally. Saturn opposite Mars was hard-nosed. It was hard-edged. It pushed a lot of us to do things that we just didn't feel like doing. Brought some of us to our emotional edges and still getting things done anyway. And the things were getting done at a slower pace than we would have wanted, you know, to boot. So it was, it was a bit tricky. It reminds me of trying to run underwater. I mean, that's great endurance training, but it's tiring. But we pushed through. We made it. And now it's time to rest. During this new moon solar eclipse, there's also a handful of planets involved that we need to take a look at. Uh, Mars, been saying that a lot recently, but Mars has entered a new sign of Leo. And it's right next to Mercury in the sky right now, just a couple degrees off. And Mars and Mercury, both in Leo, are in a square aspect to Uranus in Taurus. So Mars having left Cancer and entering Leo, which is a sign it really loves. So the poor uh, warrior who is sopping wet, you know, going through the wet trenches is now elated to be drying in the heat of the sun. And the sun is actually the planet that rules Leo. And Leo is a fire sign. So this is a very fiery expression. Mars will be able to be much more expressive and action-oriented. And Mercury will add some, some mobility as well. So there's a fervent energy here. Mars and Leo sort of has a rock star feeling to it here because Sirt of Mars is in expressive Leo. Leo is a sign of creative self-expression. Mercury here, you know, the planet of communication and mental activity. Now, on the shadow side of things, this can create some behavior in people which can come across a bit grandiose. Too much confidence, perhaps uh, impulsiveness, restlessness, and impatient behavior. And remember, with all this feeling energy of cancer, people become can become very passionate about their ideas and vocalize them with oomph and gusto. But knowing this, we can create an awareness and not get caught up uh, into potential arguments with people. Uranus is squared this Mars, Mercury. Uranus, the god of earthquakes and lightning bolts. You know, Uranus has the potential for disruption. So a sense that in some folks, you know, armed with passion, can blurt out without much, you know, forethought and unexpectedly. Also on a shadow side, this cocktail of energy between Cancer and Leo can makes me think of the idea of becoming uh, people becoming overly self-absorbed. Now, this is kind of a strange thing to say, uh, not so much for Leo because that's one shadow side element for Leo. And I'm not I'm not really meaning like overly like egotistical, okay, or selfish. And but self-absorbed is a funny thing to say because cancer, you know, that's not commonly associated with cancer because cancer is a very giving energy. It's very much about, you know, the other and nurturing. The reason I use self-absorbed is because cancer is a water sign. It's emotional. It's focused inward in our subjective reality. So a lot of folks will be focused on their inner life, looking within. And that can be quite compelling during this time. And if you're looking inward, if you're sort of navel gazing, Okay, then that's being absorbed in the self, which isn't really a bad thing unless taken to extremes. Enter Mars in Leo, expressive Leo, people asserting themselves in Mars fashion and expressing their not wants and needs, you know, from their emotional world, which again isn't a bad thing unless taken to extremes. If you have strong healer energy in your own personal birth chart, like a lot of planets in Cancer, for example, or a stacked fourth house, that could work too, or perhaps a really strong moon in your chart, then during this time, your healer gift will be pronounced. And also, people will be in need of your help. So it's very common during this time for people coming uh, who are in need of your the healing energy that you 
radiate. Nothing wrong with that, but keep in mind you may need to have healthy boundaries because you need to take care of yourself too. It's like cancer's first instinct is to protect themselves first and to heal themselves, but also, and then, you know, the second instinct is to extend that protection out to other beings. It reminds me of the, the airplane rule of, you know, put your mask on, your oxygen mask on first before putting on your child's mask. I haven't even said anything about the eclipse yet. Uh, you know, eclipses are have been observed by astrologers to be times of great change for a lot of folks, especially if it hits a sensitive place in your birth chart. And if it does, you know, it's not always true, but it's it's accurate often that there'll be this somewhat alarming pivot points in the life. This eclipse happens at 10 degrees, 37 minutes of cancer. So if you have, you know, let's say planets or maybe your rising sign between probably 7 and 13 degrees of cancer, you know, this is going to, your, your chart's going to be heavily affected by this uh, new moon. Uh, also, if you have uh, a lot of planets in cardinal signs like, uh, you know, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, or Libra, again, 7 to 13 degrees. Also take into consideration where what house of your chart the eclipse is happening. Like, let's say it's the 10th or the 6th house, both related to career and work. Um, you know, there may be an ex extreme or sudden shift in your career or your mission in the world. Maybe it's in the fourth house of your chart. So a shift in family or maybe moving uh, from your house to a different one. Could be uh, the seventh house. So a big shift in your relationship. Seventh house, the house of marriage and intimacy. If you're not too certain about your own birth chart, you can look them up for free online through Google. Just type in free birth chart. Or if you want a more intimate understanding of your chart, uh, I do offer my services on my website. You can catch the link below. Now, as I was studying the entirety of 2019, the two big events occurring this year is Saturn conjunct Pluto. They're dancing in the sky together all year. They become exact next to each other beginning of 2020, but that's easily the biggest theme of the year. Second one is Neptune square Jupiter. And that occurs most of the year. I think it ends around uh, October. But within that, looking at the Mars-Saturn opposition of June that we just experienced, and now moving into this eclipse season in July, I really saw that these two months were the focal point or the triggering months over the larger framework of, of the, the uh, an already charged year. I don't want to get too political, but we've definitely seen the temperature rising on the world stage. Uh, and I don't mean global warming. You know, we've seen uh, some tension between the U.S. and Iran and uh, between Hong Kong and China. And uh, I would suspect, you know, these continuing or maybe other events similar continuing into July. But hopefully we can we can learn from the past and, and move beyond it. Now, Saturn and Pluto are straddling the south node of the moon right now, creating a south node moon sandwich. South node is past history, habit, and Saturn, uh, the great malefic, is the bringer of change and maturation. And Pluto is, you know, Pluto always represents an emotional or psychological wound, and then of course the healing of that wound. So this combination is a pressure cooker feeling, weighing down on our past, our habitual patterns, but creating an opportunity for maturation and growth and healing, or repeating the past and cementing the dysfunction. So we'll see how this plays out on the world stage, but this is evolutionary astrology. So we really want to focus inward in our own personal journey and understand how we can use these en energies for our betterment. And of course, this will translate to being better equipped to add to the collective, you know, positive force uh, for change in the world. Now, stepping this down to a personal level, we are starting to outgrow ourselves. That's the pressure of Saturn. And some habits, you know, south node or habits, some habits are healthier than others, you know, like brushing your teeth or taking a shower, for example. Okay, But some habits are projections or products of, you know, emotional trauma and abuse and tend to repeat themselves as well. That's the, the Pluto piece. So especially now in this trigger month of July, 
and of course onward through the rest of the year, but especially this month, you know, Pluto and Saturn are really trying to smack us over the head and say, wake up. You know, it's like, hello, McFly. You know, that's a back to the future reference for those who don't know. Wake up and catch up with ourselves because we are now wiser than we look. We are outgrowing our habits and stepping into a more evolved version of ourselves. For some of us, this can create trials and tribulations in our lives to see if we repeat history again to see if we stumble again. This can be difficult, but the great prize, potentially, is a transformation of self. That's a, a Plutonian process. And this transfer, uh, transformation occurs through the maturational process of being able to pass the tests that reality throws at us. Knowing that, we recognize that we are poised for a massive expansion of consciousness. That's where we tie in the Neptune square Jupiter piece. We're being invited to become more enlightened. And this is being stimulated by a set of very reality checkish sort of energies that are the test. So like the title of my last video, we're attempting to leverage this great pressure we're feeling to turn it into diamonds. This is happening on the global stage, but also in our personal lives. So that's the big picture stuff and the backdrop for the year. But looking within that to, you know, this triggering eclipse in, uh, season of July, okay, remember to breathe. Remember to tend to the battle-weary heart and mind. And above all, remember to take a bubble bath, you know. That's the current evolutionary aim. And with the goal always being to expand our consciousness. <laughs>